Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to talk about a different topic that is not normally something I discuss, mutual funds. And believe it or not, and this may shock you, but there are some good ones that have zero cost with fidelity. Now, with the new year, there's no time like the present to go ahead and start your tax-advantaged contributions into your tax-advantaged accounts, one of them being the HSA, which I myself uh, went ahead and did today. Um, and I got into, because I have my HSA with Fidelity, and keep in mind, last year's limit, as I discussed in one of my prior videos, which I'll link to, uh, last year's contribution limit was $3,650. It's increased $200 to $3,850 in 2023. And in this video, I'm going to discuss not one, not two, but three, three best mutual funds to use in your uh, Fidelity account. That thing's like a mirror. It's like hard to figure out sometimes. But anyway, so yes, yeah, so we're gonna get into um, what I'm invested in in my own HSA account. And in my opinion, these are the three best Fidelity mutual funds. Now, a lot of YouTubers talk about index funds and a lot of people in the finance community in general talk about index funds. Um, what I wanna say about that uh, a lot of people, it's just like these meme stocks. Well, I'm not comparing index funds to meme stocks, but everybody kind of has their own passionate preference, so to speak. Some people like Vanguard. Some people like Fidelity. Some people like JP Morgan funds. Some people like BlackRock. And some people like any of the others. But in my opinion, they're just about all the same. Whatever company offers them, most companies have a large cap, a small cap, a mid cap, a mega cap. They have a total market. They have um, emerging markets, international funds. They, they all kind of offer the same things, whatever fund family you're participating in. So let me go ahead and start the screen share and we will get into the three uh, favorite funds that I want to discuss. strange. I just reformatted this computer yesterday and I got a strange message. Okay, bear with me here. Let me keep trying. Let's try this again. This may be a new uh, nuance of uh, the operating system here. Hmm. It's frustrating. Technology is frustrating sometimes. <clears throat> Let me see if I can share just a Chrome tab. Okay. Um, so I just won't have my face, I guess. But anyway, so one of the funds I want to talk about is here. But let me just show you first because I'd like to be, you know, transparent. Let me show you that this is actually what I'm invested in myself, are these three. Uh, one of them is FGRTX, one of them is FNILX, and one is the Fizrox, F-Z-R-O-X. Uh, now let's go into, I'm probably not, uh, I'm not sure what tab I'm sharing, to be honest. Let me see. Oh, now I can see. This is strange. Huh. Let me go back here for a second. No, it's all on Chrome. But anyway, I actually tried to show my own Fidelity portfolio um, and, and the three funds. But this is what I'm going to go over. I'll just focus on Yahoo for now. So, okay. FGRTX is a Fidelity mega cap stock fund. And I like this one because this includes a lot of the formerly dominant uh, tech companies. And I believe... I believe tech is going to find uh, going to eventually find its footing again and rebound. And I believe that could happen this year, which is why I'm bullish on this one. Uh, we can see where this started last year around 20 bucks. It didn't lose too much. It's got a 2% dividend yield. And uh, it's fund's been around since like 1999, I guess. So, classic index fund behavior appreciates over time, only down 9% uh <clears throat> for the for the year according to this <clears throat> now let's go back to 
Now we're going to talk about the Fizrox, currently trading at 13.25 a share. FZROX is the ticker. It was only down 5.24% over the past year and 1.1% yield. If we look from January, so yeah, we've only lost like $3 in this fund. And this is a total market index fund with zero cost, which all these Fidelity funds, the good thing, if you participate in Fidelity funds, there's zero cost to you. So there's no hidden expense ratios. There's no uh, load charge, whether on the front end or the back end. So that's all good. Uh, the third one that I really like that I'm personally invested in is the FNILX, Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund. Those of you that listen to me uh, frequently know that I'm a big fan of large cap funds, so much so that I didn't roll over my last 401k. I kept it in the, my prior company's investments because my prior company actually had a really good large cap fund. My current company doesn't. So I had to pick the closest thing to it, which was some kind of like an S&P mid cap fund. But I went over basically the holdings and it was similar. It was similar enough. It was basically the closest I was going to come. But that's a big reason why I kept my prior 401k where it was before, because I liked the funds better. So long story short, big fan of the large cap index funds. Let me check something here. Uh, let's see. Okay. We look like we're okay. So, okay. Let's look at, okay, that was the last year, last five years. And a lot of these, actually, this is a newer one, I believe. Um, so, yeah, it, this goes back to like 2018. So, this has done pretty well over time. It's gone up at least, well, it was from 935 all the way to 1687. I mean, right now it's still at like a net 50% return from inception. So if I do 1687 minus 935, at its peak, it was up 80%, which is really nice for an index fund. And let's look at holdings because I didn't discuss that. Let me see if it will actually show. If not, I'll have to go to the Fidelity site, and that will probably be outside of the scope of this video. Oh, no, here we go. Top holdings are Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, both Google shares. Facebook, NVIDIA, Berkshire Hathaway, and JP Morgan. So those are all good. Um, those are very common for mutual funds and for index funds. Those are as far as top holdings. Price to book, one of Warren Buffett's favorite metrics. I don't really look at that with mutual funds. But these stocks really, if you were picking leap options, like these stocks could all be primed for a really good year as soon as the Fed reverses course. Which, by the way, those of you that read my community post today, which obviously wasn't many of you because it only had like two likes, but the market paradox that we're currently in is that the Fed basically, in order to get inflation under control, the Fed has to crash the jobs market. Uh, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon because we have a stubbornly strong jobs market, which is a good thing. And me personally, I really don't want the Fed to crash the jobs market. I've lived through a severe recession and I would rather not go through another one. They're not fun. Uh, the 08 and 09 one, uh, living through that was not fun. And that experience really made me the way I am today when it comes to money. But I would hope at least for, you know, basically the generation that hasn't experienced that, like, it's, it's just not fun, but who knows? I mean, good things can come out of it, but I don't want to experience it again. Let's just put it that way. Um, so well, the point is the market paradox, what, what that means, what the takeaway is, is that it could be a long time before the Fed actually starts to pivot because, and this is why the market dropped today, because right now there's no reason for the Fed to reverse course because the job market is staying strong. So when we get good jobs data, like we had the JOLTS report come out, and I believe by tomorrow we're going to have the actual jobs numbers for the prior month, which will probably be pretty strong too because there's always seasonal employment for Christmas and for the holidays and the month of December. So the unemployment rate will have probably ticked down in the month of December. So we're probably going to see a very strong uh, jobs market or we're going to probably see a very strong jobs number tomorrow, which will propel the market downward even further. So get your puts ready if you don't have them already. Um, so with that being said, yeah, the jobs market continues to stay strong. So that means the Fed is not going to start cutting rates. 
And that's why the market keeps going down. And that's going to happen as long as we stay in this position. And I really don't see the job market weakening. There's still like 10 million job openings. But it would take some significant weakening in the job market for the Fed to actually pivot. I think what's going to happen, the Fed may have to give up on its 2% inflation target and just increase it to 4% and just say, heck with it. It's not worth crashing the economy, crashing the job market, just so, just so we can have 2% inflation. I mean, right now, it's pretty much baked in as it is. Um, things aren't increasing as much. Gas is coming down and things like that. So the Fed may have to go back to the drawing board. My opinion, uh, what worked in the Volcker days in the 80s doesn't work now. And there's still people trying to follow the same playbook. And it's a completely different world now. This is like 40 years later. So the same playbook is not going to work. Plus... What I say to that, so you have fiscal policy and monetary policy. Fiscal policy controlled by Congress, which is a disaster, uh, has us up to like $32 trillion in debt. So with Congress spending money like drunken sailors, what what, what is the point of the Fed uh, tightening its balance sheet? I mean, the Fed controls you know monetary policy. Congress controls fiscal policy. We're, we keep adding to the debt and the deficit. So... What does it matter what the Fed does at this point? That's what I would like someone to explain to me. I'd like to have a debate on that. But unfortunately, less and less of you want to show up or come on for a debate. So who knows when that will happen? Maybe I'll just debate myself like I'm doing right now because I'll always show up at least. Anyway, okay, so back to this after that rant. So these are the top holdings of uh, the FNILX. How am I doing here on time? Um, and then let me go back to the other two because I didn't show the top holdings. The Fizrox, you're going to see similar Fizrox. I just want to show the top holdings. And then if I can, if I can figure out this screen, I'll go back to my own portfolio towards the end. So stay tuned, live viewers. Um, okay, let's see. Holdings. Holdings. This one is also in Apple, Microsoft, <coughs> Amazon. Still says Facebook. This hasn't been updated. It's Meta now. Alphabet, A and C shares, Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, Tesla, and Johnson and Johnson. And then now, last but not least, the F N or did wait a minute. Did I look at um no, I think F and I L X is the last one, I think. Let's see. Holdings. Let's see. Uh it almost looks the same. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Alphabet, both shares, Meta, which the, which it did update, NVIDIA, Berkshire Hathaway, and JP Morgan. Let me make sure that wasn't the same one. Let me see about, um, what was my other one? FG, FGRTX. I'm not remembering now if I just went over that. I have short-term memory loss, which is weird. I remember really long-term stuff. Like I can remember exactly what I talked about a year ago in the video I did a year ago today, but I'll forget what I did two seconds ago. Kind of crazy. Well, the market futures are up tomorrow, so maybe the market's expecting a weaker jobs report. Okay, let's look at holdings here. And then, since I like talking about macroeconomic commentary, I might just look at uh, what's on the horizon for tomorrow. Okay, I didn't go into this one. My apologies. Okay, so this is actually an ExxonMobil, Microsoft, General Electric, Wells Fargo, Apple, Bank of America, both shares of Alphabet, Hess Corp, and United Healthcare. So some diversification here. Uh, inception date, 1998. Wow, that's an oldie. Oldie but goodie. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Uh, one live viewer. So let me, I'm going to end the screen share. I'm going to try to go back to Fidelity to show my portfolio. Uh, it's really made things weird. Okay, let's do this. Let me see. Let me see if it will let me do this now. Nope. Okay, I'm just going to have to share a window at a time. Uh, let's, do, let's see here. Present uh, Chrome tab. So let's do this portfolio summary. We'll do this really quick. Okay, so this is my Fidelity portfolio. See, Fizrox, FNILX, FGRTX. So you know I'm not bluffing. That's what I'm actually in. 
because there's a lot of YouTubers that talk about stuff that they're not actually in. So I like to do that myself. Um, oh, I see what I did. Stupidly, I clicked leave studio instead of sh uh, stop sharing. Okay, let me stop sharing that now. Now I'm going to share another tab. I'm going to go to my favorite uh, 4xfactory.com and look at what's expected for tomorrow. So let's do that now, and then we'll end the video. Okay, present again. Um, and then Chrome tab, 4X Factory. Okay, here we go. Okay, so tomorrow, well, let's look at today. So US dollar, uh, job cuts number, non-farm employment change, the forecast. So we far exceeded the forecast for non-farm employment change. So we increased, again, like I said, because of the month of December. Um, unemployment claims were much lower than expected. Trade balance was lower than expected. So that's a good number. When it's green, it's good. Uh, final services PMI came in a little higher than expected. Natural gas storage was a little bit uh, less than expected, which in that case, we want that to be higher. Crude inventories was higher than expected. So that's good. That means we're building back up. Uh, and then let's look at tomorrow, January 6th. Oh, wow. Some people's favorite day. Uh, let's see. Okay, so unemployment rate is expected to be three point seven percent tomorrow. Non-farm employment change. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bold prediction right now. All these numbers are gonna exceed projections, and the market's gonna drop tomorrow. So, with that being said, hope you all enjoyed that. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and keep an eye out for my next videos. Thanks so much for tuning in, and take care.